Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you. Tonight is Friday night. It's late night after work and uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a wrestling discussion. Battled my head around and figured out, wow, we haven't talked Battleground yet. We don't have any Battleground predictions up there. So here we go. We got eight matches. Uh, we'll talk about all of them a little bit one by one, giving you who I think is going to be the winner and if I really care about this match. There's a lot of talk out there about people thinking that Battleground might be one of the worst WWE pay-per-views of all time. I don't think that this pay-per-view can top what the uh, ECW De December to Dismember pay-per-view was of, I believe, 2006. Um, that by far is easily... Uh, the the worst pay per view by far because it didn't have any stars on it, it didn't have any um, real backing behind it. If you go get the DVD, it only lists two matches. Like they're the only matches that are on there because everything else is so bad that it, they don't want to let you know what is on that DVD. It is horrible. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll start it off with talking about Battleground Kickoff, the uh, YouTube. A uh, free pre-show that uh, you can watch just about anywhere in the world, except for on your TV, uh, is Dolph Ziggler against Damian Sandow. Honestly, I feel sorry for both of these guys. Uh, Dolph Ziggler was a, a, a champion just a few months ago. Damian Sandow is your uh, money in the bank briefcase holder for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. And... Uh, if that's even a, a brand of SmackDown anymore. The thing's blue, so that makes me think it's at least a SmackDown-based one. But um, we'll see what it is. They haven't uh, really hinted at Sandow being the Money in the Bank winner, holding that briefcase out there since uh, Cody Rhodes was trying to steal it back before SummerSlam time. That has kind of quieted it down. And by watching Sandow, he hasn't won a match in God knows however long it's it's been forever as far as i can think of uh just recently he did a job on uh main event to the big show which isn't horrible because big shows sort of being protected as like a sort of a main event guy waiting to beat up triple h and uh, his followers so uh i don't know why they use sandow in that role but um i don't know he just it's been a long damn time since he's won a match um i'm gonna pick Ziggler in this match, but I mean Ziggler's been doing a whole bunch of jobs lately as well. Um, they they let him have a win over um, Ambrose in that uh, eleven on three match for Monday Night Raw uh, a few uh, weeks ago. But then they had the uh, the match on SmackDown that was booked as supposed to be like a big time deal, and the match ended in like a minute and a half uh, with the disqualification. Surprise, surprise! The good old Shield did a run in. And cost, and cost themselves the match. But uh, I'll pick Ziggler in the win. Wouldn't be surprised if Sandow wins. Um, and then from there we go to a who gives a fuck match. Uh, Kofi Kingston against Bray Wyatt. I'm going to pick Bray Wyatt in this match. Because they have to keep these guys uh, kind of hot. For when uh, um, uh, Kane makes his return. And so they can have some sort of a, a feud with these guys. Or at least have something going. I sort of think that uh, when Kane does come back, he's going to sort of join the Wyatts as a guy that's sort of been, like, hypnotized or, you know, tricked into joining the cult. And then he will do their, uh, uh, their I guess, their, their bidding or whatever they need him to do. So I'll take Bright, uh, Bray Wyatt in this match. From there, we'll talk about uh, Curtis Axel against R-Truth. I really thought that I was reading that wrong, but then I remember that that was a match that they did plan on Monday Night Raw for the Intercontinental Championship. This reminds me of R Truth going up against uh, um, for the United States Championship last year. I believe it was at Hell in the Cell and Night of Champions last year. I think he was uh, having a big time feud with uh, Cesaro, and uh, nobody gave a fuck then, and nobody gives a fuck now. Uh, we'll pick Curtis Axel to win this because I don't see him dropping the Intercontinental title because that's the only thing making him relevant. And I don't think that R-Truth has done anything that makes him relevant in the last little while as well. Um, then we go to uh, the Divas Championship match. AJ Lee going up against Brie Bella. Honestly, I'm very surprised by this match. Uh, for the one fact of when I was watching TV, I thought this was going to be AJ Lee against Natalia. Um, for two weeks in a row, we saw AJ and Natalia sit at the commentating desk, uh, going back and forth, exchanging, uh, sort of, uh, uh, insults and this, that, and the other. Then all of a sudden, Brie Bella gets engaged to Daniel Bryan, and 
there's plans for her to be the new Divas champion. Honestly, in my mind, I don't see them taking the title off of AJ Lee, even though it seems like she's beat everyone and their mother uh, for the uh, for the title. But uh, AJ, probably honestly, in my mind, is the best thing going um, <coughs> as a uh, as a chick wrestler. She's not the best chick wrestler in the company, but I think she has the best the, the most things going for. Her. And uh, I don't really want to see them keep up this feud against AJ against the Total Divas clan. But um, I don't know what the fuck else they're going to do. Um, then uh, Alberto Del Rio is taking on Rob Van Dam in a battleground hardcore match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yes, I do know that Rob Van Dam is a former uh, hardcore champion uh, for the uh, WWE. But the one thing uh, Rob Van Dam isn't is the holder of a current contract. Uh, Rob Van Dam has worked the extended amount of dates on his current contract, and uh, I hate to be the total smart mark here. There's uh, been no talk of extensions. I think that he's sort of going to be a guy that's sort of like uh, a Chris Jericho who's going to come in and out uh, when he needs to. I don't think Rob Van Dam is the kind of guy who wants to work 365 days a year. I think he's going to come in, work his dates as soon as he can, go home, spend that time, wait till that money is blown, and then come back and make some more. Um, I'm going to take uh, Alberto Del Rio in this match. Um, and then hopefully we can see if he's going to go up against uh, Rey Mysterio in the foreseeable future. Because I think that is the only reason why he's holding the uh, World Heavyweight Championship right now. Um, CM Punk is going to take on Ryback in a singles match. In my mind, honestly, I know that CM Punk hasn't won a match and God knows... Uh, however, on pay-per-view, but I don't think CM Punk is the kind of guy who really cares if he's going to win a match, if it's not a championship match. Uh, I don't really see him as a guy that's going to be going into contention for the uh, WWE Championship anytime soon, because I don't think that WWE wants to put CM Punk into a role where he's going to be held down by the man, um, you know, Triple H. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see that. I, I think if they did do it, honestly... I think it'd be good, but I don't think anybody in the world wants to see, you know, CM Punk complaining against the man, and it's something we've already seen him do. I think that uh, we already know that CM Punk is the kind of character that's going to go against the rules and do whatever he has to do, and if he goes out and he has to do it in this forced way, it's just going to come off really, really bad. Um, that's just my opinion, but uh, I think that Punk's going to be out of the... Um, title picture for the next foreseeable future, even though he is one of the uh, few guys they got once they use up Daniel Bryan. Um, so, and, and then also, just to bring up the fact that they're planning on using Ryback uh, in a match against uh, Undertaker at WrestleMania if all things go to plan and Brock's comes and uh, The Rock is there and everybody else in the world. Um, Ryback needs to be on a huge winning streak because I don't think anybody's going to take Ryback seriously. Um... Even if he comes, even if let's say he beats Punk at this pay per view, he beats Punk at Hell in the Cell. Uh, I mean, uh, he could beat. Uh, I don't. Who, who, I don't care. In uh, the month of uh, November and December, he could beat. He could beat John Cena himself at the Royal Rumble and at the Elimination Chamber. And if you put him against Taker at freaking WrestleMania, he's still not going to be a believable champion in my mind. Um, so I'll take Ryback for the win, just because I think he is going to win. Uh, the big match uh, that I think... I don't think anybody's buying the pay-per-view just for this, but honestly, it is the the match that with the most uh, the must the, the most emotion to it. Like uh, It's the match that I care the most about on this whole card, and... Um, I'm, I'm not going to go out of my way and pay 60 bucks for this one match. Um, when the DVD comes out, it's not a matter of fact that, I mean, I, I know I'm willing to buy this. I don't think I'm going to buy this new just to see this match again. I will wait until, you know, the DVD market goes down and I can buy it used. Because uh, I doubt this is going to be a Blu-ray release because this is going to be a release that nobody wants to have on their shelf unless they're just a true collector and they want to have it all. But, um... It's Goldust and Cody Rhodes with Dusty Rhodes in the corner of the American Dream. Boom! Elbow drops on everybody. Uh, going up against The Shield, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Dean Ambrose will be in their corner for The Shield. Rooting them on with his United States Championship on the corner or on, on his shoulder. If you uh, read through the uh, things, if Goldust and Cody win, they are reinstated by the WWE. Uh, if The Shield wins, Dusty will lose his job as the NXT trainer. And Rhodes' the family will be banned from all WWE events in the foreseeable future. I think that they have uh, pushed and pushed. 
Uh, Goldust and Cody Rhodes, and like Triple H says, he's given him four uh, different chances on four different things. I don't think anybody wants to see um, Goldust and Cody Rhodes have to beg and beg for their jobs back. You have to give them the women the the, the win in this match. Um, I don't think there's any way in the world that they lose. There's any way they can get their jobs back. But uh, I want to see Dusty in the ring throwing them elbows. You guys know what's up. And um, I just I think that's it. I just think that they're going to win. What they do with Goldust on TV, I have no clue. But hopefully in real life he'll get a real job. Uh, if they like his attitude that he's had for the past uh, month or so on TV. Hopefully he can get that uh, that job that he had where he was working with the chicks uh, as an agent. And we'll go from there. Uh, the main event of the night, Daniel Bryan against Randy Orton. Still a little bit weird to be saying Daniel Bryan in the main event. Um, hopefully he's a guy that you know they can really put there. I know they've had plans of uh, him winning the Royal Rumble and some other things. So uh, he is the guy that is on their mind. Hopefully the uh, TV ratings when he's in matches in the main event will bounce back. And uh, people will care about him. But uh, Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. Honestly, in my mind, I think everything in the world right now is based around Survivor Series. I don't see them trading wins back and forth between now and Hell in the Cell. Uh, I think that this match is either going to be some sort of a draw or some sort of a no contest. Maybe this will be the, the match that Big Show climbs into the ring, knocks out Randy Orton. They say that Daniel Bryan wins the match, but then uh, once again they strip him. Or Triple H comes out before they have a three count, stops the match, and says, you know, we're throwing this out because the Big Show entered in there. And then he can blame everybody to hate the Big Show because he's the guy that's out there. Uh, hopefully everybody in the world doesn't ask for refunds for this, that, that does pay for this. Because honestly, in my mind, most people should be knowing what they're getting with this pay-per-view. This pay-per-view is something that's just basically... Thrown together pieces of shit. It's just basically the only reason why you should buy this show if you don't have enough wrestling in your life and you want an extra show this week. We saw Raw. It's up to you if you wanted to watch Main Event. We saw SmackDown. And now you don't want to wait until Monday uh, to watch more wrestling. So you want to watch some on Sunday. You got to pay 60 bucks for it. I know a handful of people out there. I know two handfuls of people out there are going to be uh, streaming this show. Uh, but that's just the way the world goes. I mean, if there's something for free and there's something for 60 bucks, which way are you going to go, even if you're a few seconds behind and it lags a little bit? If you're one of those people in some streaming rooms that are complaining about the stream and <laughs> being laggy, uh, just press the button on your damn remote. Like, I have, uh, I guess I have, I don't know how to say this, but I have all the respect in the world for the people that do run the streaming sites because they do help a lot of us out. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who do give their hard-earned money, you know, month in and month out to the uh, WWE people. But honestly, in my mind, I mean, if it's just a normal show somewhere along the way and it's not really a groundbreaking show, uh, I would rather just stream this stuff because honestly, in my mind, you know, I buy a lot of t-shirts, I buy a lot of DVDs, and, um, you know, I think my money is, is spread around enough that uh, I don't want to say they owe me something because I do think they do know deserve to get paid somehow along the way. Um, but um, I don't know. Sometimes it's just not worth it. But, I mean, you got to keep up to date. You can't fall behind. Confessions of a true uh, wrestling streamer here. I know I'm not the only one. So don't be throwing eggs at me like, oh, what a piece of shit he is. So, uh I don't know. We'll go from here, everybody. We'll talk about this after Sunday. I'm sure we'll have some sort of a video up on Saturday. The Niners play the Texans. It's going to be a good game. I think it's a Sunday night game as well. I love it when I have a Sunday night game and a pay-per-view at the same time. I think we had this uh, with the Seahawks game uh, last month. So, peace out. Have fun, everybody.